Hey there, let's talk about spring emotions. So first of all, spring is, is such a wonderful season. It's actually where I live right now. It's my favorite season for the city. Um, I live in Walla Walla, Washington, and I just, I absolutely, I love spring in Walla Walla. There's dramatic clouds in the air. There's dramatic skyscapes, beautiful sunsets. Um, the weather, you can have four seasons in one day. And then as we move into April and May, there's just that sweet, nice, warm, but not overly hot weather. And we have all of these beautiful blooms. So that's where I live. And I love that part of spring. But if you think about March, and now we're in April, so sometimes depending on where you live, April, and we do have wild swings here too in April, spring weather is known for being volatile. Um, and so is it any wonder that our emotions are also volatile in spring? Um, I'll explain why. So spring is considered the season of the liver and the gallbladder in Chinese medicine, and they are the wood organs. So the wood organs are much like plants, so you can think about looking at plants for guidance of how the wood organs behave in the body. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that each month throughout spring, but for now with emotions, the liver and the gallbladder are all about bursting forth and creating new life, creating new plans, bringing those plans into fruition. They are decision makers, they're long range planners, um, and in, physically they're in charge of all the joints, everything that pivots in our body. Um, hips, knees, you know, ankles. And they're in charge of the tendons uh, and ligaments, our connective tissue. So, Notice if your tendons are feeling a little dry and brittle, if you're feeling like you're getting a lot of joint pain, a lot of like borderline tendonitis or outright tendonitis, really stiff neck, that can be a sign that your liver and your gallbladder organs need a little extra attention, especially moistening them. So think about a plant. If you don't water it for a long period of time, it starts to dry out and get brittle and it'll break instead of just bend with things. Um, that's what we think about when we're thinking about connective tissue and the joints and how healthy our joints are doing. So if you are really physically active or if you're getting back into a training program after um, being more low key over the winter, like so many of us do, um, Listen to your joints, listen to what that connective tissue is doing, because if it's starting to get really inflamed or creaky or just naggy, achy, that means we need to really support the liver and the gallbladder um, through certain foods that we'll talk about on week three. Now, this transition into spring, spring is the first yang season of the year. So we're going from this interior hibernation, supporting on rebuilding our body, rebuilding our core energy in the winter to this big burst of life and energy in the spring. So it's a lot like when a seed germinates and then creates that stem that pushes up towards the light and the beginning of its root system going down, it takes a lot of energy and it's really sometimes quite uncomfortable to be pulling out from this hibernating state. That's the second reason why our emotions can be really volatile in spring. So sometimes if we have been under a lot of stress for long periods of time, like so many of us right now because of the pandemic um, and what our life has been like through job, work, home life um, with the pandemic, um, or just other layers of stress through all of those aspects of our life, um, we don't get to replenish our stores over the winter and we end up entering spring on the tired side or dare I say burnt out um, because that is another prevalent problem right now in our in our society is a high level of burnout across many fields, many professions. So if you are in that burnout state, spring 
pushing from hibernating where we're supposed to have this store of energy into this yang state is, is going to be even more uncomfortable. And so when we don't have that foundation of good quality energy to draw from, we're going to be more vulnerable to having large mood swings in spring. It'll be just as dramatic as those spring storms that um, you know, where one day it's 60 degrees and the next day a huge storm rolls in and it's either snowing or pouring rain. Um, and we thought we were done with these storms. So I find it's really helpful to just be aware that that's actually a normal state for spring. And if we are more depleted, we're more likely to have big mood swings. Um, I try to think of it, it's, it's just a natural process as opposed to having judgment on it or being mad at ourselves or being upset with ourselves about having mood swings because that is, just so hard to be living with um, so if you have those if you are walking into spring low energy just pay attention be aware that mood swings are actually normal now do we our goal though is instead of having these wild mood swings where we're kind of on the roller coaster and we are just on along for the ride and don't have much control over it this is where we want to br bring in some thought processes, some strategies from the Chinese medicine world, and some food therapy so that our mood swings are more like this. So, in the world of Chinese medicine, the liver and the gallbladder, their emotion is anger. And the reason it is, is like anger that's healthy is all about um, creating and making sure we have a community where there's justice happening. So anger is sort of that righteous scenario of realizing like, oh, hey, something's not working, we should fix it, we should change it for the better. Um, so it's really more just that push to make, the, to be the change we wanna see in the world, right? As opposed to just getting bogged down and really fiery, hot, intense anger that just consumes us. Uh, because like a plant, you got that hot fire, that plant is not going to survive it. So the anger is, is very damaging to ourselves. Um, if it goes, in, if, it, if we get out of balance and instead of just having it be a little burst of energy to be like, oh, I want to be the change I want to see in the world. Now I know what I want to do. I'm pivoting this way. And it just turns into this fiery, consuming anger, or it's that constant irritability, that constant little like, Wah, I'm mad at this. Um, it hurts us just as much as it hurts others, and arguably it actually kind of hurts our own uh, system a little bit more. So we can work with that though, which is really helpful. Um, so if the anger is happening a lot more frequently, just note it um, and think about what what is the anger trying to teach me? If we can get to the root and the bottom of what the anger is and what it's about, then sometimes you can unravel it. I'm gonna come back to that in just a second because I also wanna share in this video that the cognitive pattern, so there's always a cognitive pattern associated with a season. The cognitive pattern is planning. And are you already thinking about your garden or have you already mapped out a super ambitious yard project for the spring since it is now April? Um, are you... <laughs> Did you decide to build like nine raised beds and then do a big landscaping project and you want it all done by um, Memorial Day weekend? I mean, I do that all the time. I remember one year I decided to build a chicken coop. I already had the chicks, so that had to happen in, in like 12 weeks. I was going to build five raised beds and then I was going to like landscape half the yard and that and then, then I had some positive change in my business and I was able to move locations to a better location. And that, I just laughed at myself because I was like, oh, now I fell into the trap of spring. And so what happens is we go from winter where we, you know, we're focusing on hibernating and building our energy and maybe that looks like us just being like more sedentary and restful depending on what recharges us. Um, and then we go into spring where we have this young energy and we have this energy to draw from and it feels so good that we want to do everything, right? 
So this is one of the best ways to pay attention if you are burnt out, uh, and I think most of us are, pay attention to how much you're planning and how much you're committing to, because this is like a, the best act of self-care in spring, is to check yourself if you're over planning. So over planning is a big thing in spring. And so think, sit down, whenever you have a plan, you're like, okay, I wanna do my garden this year. Make your plan and then go back and reevaluate. Is this realistic with my current, with all the responsibilities on my time right now? If it's not realistic, how can you scale it back? It doesn't mean don't have a garden. Can you just focus on the super low maintenance vegetables? Or if you normally grow your own seeds from, if you grow your own starts from seeds in your house, like all the hot peppers and the tomatoes and the eggplants and everything, if you don't have time for that, Maybe you can allow yourself to buy starts from somebody locally um, and just plant the really easy guys, just plant the greens and the carrots and the beets right now. Um, is that a way that you can scale back? Or if you're building raids beds and if you are gonna build nine, can you start with three and see whether or not you have time for it? So those are ways to really, if we dial it back, and make a plan that's achievable, we feel better because we bring it into fruition and it's, it gets completed. You can always add more raised beds if getting three built was easy and you realize you have another extra weekend for it. But um, this, is where, this is where I really encourage you to make your plans. There's nothing wrong with making plans, but then come back, give it a day, or give it an hour, come back and look at it and really check in, is this realistic with my responsibilities on my time? Is this realistic for my time that is available? And is this going to nurture me? Or is it gonna add more stress to my plate? So this is one way you can actually support yourself if you notice that you're having more irritability and your emotions are a lot more mood swingy and if there's also more, if you're finding yourself more easy to anger. Um, Self-care comes in many different ways. And this is what I love about Chinese medicine is that the self-care for the season gets tailored to what your organ systems are asking for. So this is actually an act of self-care of, of recognizing planning versus over planning. Okay, the liver and the gallbladder organs, they love planning things but they're like super elated when they actually get to the plan gets to be made and the plan comes into fruition. So having realistic plans, being able to actually accomplish your goals, that is going to just feed that love right into the liver and support it. It's gonna nurture the liver chi, it's gonna nurture the liver blood. All right, if you're great at planning and great at those fruitions and you're great at bringing plans into fruitions and you're still having the anger and the irritability, that's when we wanna sit down and think like, okay, what is, what is our stress level like right now? Because we can do so much wonderful stuff for ourselves and our life. And if we have like a higher external stress factor that we don't have much control over, that can contribute to the mood swings. And sometimes just being aware of it and being aware of the anger, that's half the battle. And the next time you feel the anger, you catch it faster and you actually have the ability to be like, oh, I'm gonna take a few deep breaths and I'm gonna regroup. Or if you're aware that it's realistic that there might be more anger because there's higher external stressors that are beyond your control, um, then it becomes easier to see the strategies you need to work with the anger. So um, I find like knowing is absolutely one half the battle, but I really want you to know that early spring, March and April are big times where it is pretty normal to be easily irritated and easily frustrated because we are like pushing into this young state from the old hibernating state. Um, and that is just uncomfortable. So 
I find sitting down and, and thinking about what are your best ways of managing anger or managing frustration for you because it doesn't not everything works for every person is it taking a moment to recognize that you have anger and count to 10 that's great that's great for some people that doesn't work well for me for me it's recognizing that i have anger and then taking deep breaths down into my belly and imagining a root growing from the bottom of my foot right below the ball of the foot imagine a root growing and just feel it going deep down into the earth and just anchoring me onto the onto the planet that sense of anchoring down into the earth being more connected to the ground beneath me with those slow deep breaths in my belly that helps me the most um, when there's unpredicted stressors that come up during the day and they might make me feel like on edge or feel that stress reaction that borderlines with being easily irritated um, so that's what's most helpful for me uh, there are other ways to work with it but knowing that this frenetic grumpy easily easy ri easily rising energy is part of spring i think helps us be kinder to ourselves and then that also it makes it easier for us to not go there because if we're kinder to ourselves and we're not judging ourselves or being irritable or angry um it, it softens everything for us so just keep that in mind that this is spring this is the energy of spring it's fun it's wonderful it's beautiful it's also volatile and irritable and tense um so next week i'm going to have a the an extra bonus video that will be about the walking meditation and so finding a way of movement and mindfulness that's successful for you are some of the best ways to kind of soothe the liver chi and help the liver chi handle stress. So that's the other piece that I did not talk about yet is the liver and the gallbladder, they're the organs of spring, but they're also the most impacted by stress. So the reason being is that they're in charge of keeping everything free and limber and mobile in the body. They open up all the channels and collaterals. And so where do we tend to get super stuck when we're stressed? Our jaw, our shoulders, right behind the back of our head. Maybe we'll get a tension headache. Maybe it's across our hips. That's all on the gallbladder channel. And so that channel will actually tighten up when there's more levels of stress. So the best, easiest way to calm them down is to move and stretch. It's any movement. It doesn't have to be aggressive. It doesn't have to be a lot of movement. It could be a walk. It could be swimming. It could be um, some really chill, slow yoga or fast yoga, whatever you like. Um, it could be dancing to a song for five minutes in your, in your living room. It could be just jumping up and down um, when you need a break. It doesn't have to be prolonged, but just any type of movement that you enjoy um, is really going to help free up the liver and the gallbladder meridian. So that's the, the little bit of lifestyle hack. Mindfulness practices are helpful, but I find for the liver and the gallbladder in early spring, a moving mindfulness practice is the most ideal. So that's why our bonus video is going to be about a moving mindfulness practice. And then next week, we are going to have, um, I will be talking about more about the thought processes of spring. And in week three, we're going to dive into the pantry. And then week four, our house plants. Okay, so check, check your membership program for your downloadable PDFs for this month, because we have some goodies for you. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you again next week.